In this video, I'll be going through my experience with the Ricoh GR3X. Stay tuned for some of my work that I've taken with it, how it compares to the 28mm version, and also some downsides. Hey guys, today I'm in Ginza, Tokyo today to bring you a very special video about the Ricoh GR3X. This video will hopefully be no bullshit. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm not just messing around with my buddies today. I'm not just using this camera for a single day and spitting out random blanket statements. I've had this camera for over a month now uh, with the courtesy of Ricoh, thank you very much. Uh, they've been a cool company. They just lent it to me for however long I want, whatever that means, thank you. Um, so thank you for being cool. Thank you for being a no bullshit company, which is aligned with my own values, right? And more than anything, thank you Ricoh for trusting my ability with a camera. However, uh, please don't consider this a full review of the camera. I'll be going through my impressions of some of the strengths that I felt uh, this camera has, but also some of its flaws that I've realized over the course of time. After this video, if any of you are actually interested in a full review, please let me know in the comments below. And also, if you're down there, please hit the like button so the algorithm helps me. Thank you. Yeah, let's get on with the video. Okay, next, I wanted to briefly go through um, how different it is from the Ricoh GR3 or, you know, the normal Ricoh GR series, which is a 28 millimeter equivalent lens as opposed to a 40 mil equivalent lens on the Ricoh GR3X. So what are the differences? Well, actually, it's pretty much the same. From what I know, it's slightly thicker, or so they say. I don't know if these few millimeters make a difference or not, but it is thicker. Apparently the touch screen is more responsive. And obviously the glaring big, big difference is that this is a 40 millimeter focal length as opposed to a 20 millimeter equivalent focal length with the original uh, Ricoh GR series. And honestly, that's about it. But the last point is pretty much the only important one and the one that is the game changer. If you're the type of person that thought 28 mil or 35 mil is too wide for you, then you're definitely in for a treat. In fact, this actually might be your only option outside of compact zoom, you know, digital cameras that have smaller sensors than the Ricoh GR series, which is an APS-C camera. It's a new concept and it's something that I personally thought was untouched ground, which is compact fixed lens cameras with focal length outside of the normal or typical 28 mil or 35 millimeter range. Next, I want to go through the strengths of this camera, as well as kind of like why the 40 millimeter focal length makes so much of a difference uh, as compared to the 28 mil. This is kind of universal to the Ricoh GR series, but definitely the compact nature of the camera and just how small it is, how light it is. This is just a flagship strength of this camera in itself. However, this combined with the... F I don't know what that was about, that was weird. However, this fact combined with the 40, the 40, 40, oh my God, with the 40 mm, however, this fact combined with the 40 millimeter focal length just makes a totally different beast. I think a really good example of this was when I was riding my bike and I saw something really nice ahead of me, I took this out of my pocket and then I captured it and that was exactly the scene that I was seeing with my eyes. And this is in comparison with the 28mm lens, which captures a wider image. The 40mm is also said to capture an image that's closer to something like what your eye might see. It's just a different level of versatility compared to the 28mm and it's really good for portraits, but it's also good for street too. Next point, I think the 40mm lens is it's kind of, you know, it's good for people that are used to the 35 millimeter to 50 millimeter focal length range. It has a little bit more compression. The image overall is a little bit cleaner. It's a little bit more pretty, quote unquote. And this is just something that you get with longer focal lengths. Last point, the autofocus is super quick in most cases. Um, so you can just take this out of your pocket. You can point at something and then it just takes the image and it's fine usually. And here are some of the downsides or points to note about uh, this camera. I have to say that it can be user error or there can be fixes to this, but I haven't found them. I don't know how to get to them. So, sorry, just a trigger warning. 
The autofocus is extremely slow in very specific conditions. Conditions such as backlit scenarios or very, very low light scenarios. And sometimes in these cases, the camera actually doesn't even focus. It just keeps on looking for something and it just never focuses, which is quite irritating, honestly. This just might have to do with the longer focal length, the 40 millimeter focal length, as opposed to the 28 millimeter focal length. In general, wider lenses, like the 28 mm have an easier time focusing on things because there's more things in focus. So this actually can be a general issue that longer focal length compact cameras might have to find a solution to in the future. Next up, the battery life is pretty bad. For a full day of shooting, depending on what kind of photographer you are, you might need a few batteries uh, in your pocket. A Ricoh marketer mentioned to me that um, it takes about 150 to 200 photos with the camera just on at all times. Next up, this is something that I found personally. It's really hard to take a straight image. So we're all akin to the Ricoh GR series not having a viewfinder, but having no viewfinder and shooting with a longer focal length, like a 40 mil lens, is, is a different beast. Don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm no slouch at taking a, a normal, you know, fine image with straight horizons, but combined with a small LUR LCD panel, it's really hard to get a straight image out of this camera. And lastly, the 28 millimeter length. Maybe you haven't used it before, maybe you have, but it's more versatile than you think. And actually, from what I've noticed, um, a 28 millimeter versus a 40 millimeter does not make as much of a difference as you may think, or as I thought. It's a big leap, I know, but like it's enough so that you can kind of walk that length or you can, you can get close enough or you can get further enough with your own feet. And one argument I have in favor of the 28 mil as opposed to the 40 mil is that it does better for like indoor shooting or more like daily life shooting. Let's say you're going out on a date with a girlfriend or you're married, so it's your wife, or you're a camera geek, so um, your friend zone, so it's just a friend exploiting you for photos. In any case, in these scenarios, you're sitting either alongside or across the table to each other. Let's say you wanna take an image of your food or her food or his food, or let's say you wanna take an image of that person across the table. Then when it becomes the 40 millimeter, it gets really tight. It gets like really, really tight. Um, and it's kind of hard to document those like specific situations. And sometimes I found myself just actually taking out my smartphone uh, because the smartphone is actually closer to a 28 mm focal length. Another scenario, let's say you're at home and then you found something nice and you just want to take a photo of it. In most cases, if that's the situation, the 28 mm will probably capture more information for you and will probably be the better choice. Okay, but you know, I'm just playing devil's advocate here. So overall, amazing camera, amazing idea for a product. I'm really happy that Ricoh is not only trying to innovate, but also they're not only listening to consumers, but they're listening to experts in the field. The fact that you have either a 28 mil option or a 40 mil option for your favorite camera, that itself is a luxury. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention, if you guys don't trust me with Ricoh stuff, I've actually, uh, I've actually owned a Ricoh GR2 for four years now, and I've taken tens of thousands of images on it. So you can trust me on that point uh, if that's any validation. And that concludes the video. Uh, thank you everyone for watching. If you want to follow me on Instagram or Twitter, or you want to support me on Patreon, go ahead, I'll have the links down below. And thank you again. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye, sayonara, bye-bye.